All right, everybody, we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of The Vape Team. This is episode nine. I can't believe nine episodes already, nine weeks. This is more commitment that I've had in my life since I don't even know when. Um, but, you know, we got a fresh show tonight. Mike Vapes is here. Say what's up, Mike. What up, what up? Buck Kickers from Buck Kickers Reviews is here. How you all doing? And yours truly, Brian from the Vapor Chronicles. We all are three vaping, we're three vaping fellas, and we have channels on YouTube, and we love to vape. So this channel is for us to share together in a community atmosphere with all of you guys, our subscribers, and our fans, and our friends, and our family. Hi to my brother Scott, because I know he loves watching this. Um... Also, hi to Mike's cousin George from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this show's been a blast. We've had a lot of fun, and it's not going to end. This is just the beginning. So strap in, get out your lotion and your lube. We're going in deep. So They all like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he did. Um, anyway, let me, let me start off by asking Buck Kickers to talk about what he is vaping on, what he's enjoying this evening. Well, this evening I'm currently vaping on the, let me see if I can get this to focus here, the Vanga tank. Okay, this is coming up for review in a day or two. Very similar to the Arctic tank, except it has a top filling option, very cool clear Um And I'm still vaping on the, uh, the Heat Vape Invader Mini. Solid, solid little mod here, folks. Cool. So, yeah. Hello, everybody. Mike Vapes here. And I am vaping on, and I don't know why I waited so long. And this tank is probably the best tank in the market, in my opinion. The Freemax Star on the Hexome with some infamous trill. I am also... Vaping my Zero, my beautiful gold Zero clone with temperature control, with the Silo Beast. And uh, I have some Loopy in here. And, uh, yeah, my Loopy Loopy. Motherfucking Loopy. <laughs> and for my temp control today for nickel that I'm using, I'm using my new uh, Smoke TCT tank on the IPv4. And in here I have a new juice called Arise, which is from the cloud company it's called. This is uh, Suicide Bunny's uh, new line. Nice. It's Arise. Arise is pretty good juice, the strawberry cream, and it's delicious. Is that the juice you got when we were on our date last weekend? Yes, at the PA Expo. I picked that one up. Yeah. And speaking of the PA Expo, i gotta, I got to apologize to a lot of people. You know, you guys, not excluded here. <clears throat> I had some family stuff that came up at the last minute, and I, unfortunately I couldn't make it that weekend. So apologies to both Mike and Brian, and, you know, I know there was a couple of fans out there who wanted to meet me. Sorry, guys. Well, the good news, BK, is that I got both of Mike's hands this time because he didn't have any hands on you, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> Uh, no, we had a great time. We missed you. But you know what? In July, the, the, the vape team is going to be in full effect at the New Jersey, what is it, New Jersey Vape Expo? Correct. It's going to be, I think, in the Meadowlands. And Meadowlands. our good friend, Phil Basardo, who I've never met, and he wouldn't even know me or consider me a friend, um, is going to be there. So I'm, I'm excited to get a picture with him, and I'm going to maybe get a tattoo of me and Phil. Um, anyway... That's cool. I'm going to try and lick his deer while we're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what am I vaping on? Well, let me tell you. I am vaping on the brand new Beyond Vape Silo Beast. And this is the Joytech Ego One Mega. And tell me that does not look sexy as hell combined together. For all you tube lovers out there, that is also a dot mod drip tip. So I got the dot mod, I got the silo beast, and uh, let me tell you something, it's hitting really, really good. That's hot as hell, bro. You know me, I love some good tube. Just saying. Now, for those lovers of a hardcore hit, I mean, this thing is, I think, pushing 4.2 volts, 
on a 0.5 ohm coil, so it's not going to be the you know monster clouds, um, but it, it, it vapes really well with 0.5 ohms, and I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm also vaping on my Kalanis as usual. That's always next to me, no matter what I do. And one of my favorite. This is like this is a tank that has been my most guilty pleasure. A satisfying, cheap, affordable, and I can't wait till I get the G version of it coming soon. This is the Inakin iSub, okay? And for those that don't know, the iSub kicks major ass. It is a so airy, open. Flavorful cloud chuck and draw. Uh, it, it's just really good, and it looks really good too. So I have this on my IPV Mini 2, and um, I got a whole bunch of other shit that I'm sure I'll whip out during the show and talk about. But what I want to talk about first, and I want to bring this to Mike, and Mike's not even prepared for this. So make sure you prepare yourself, Mike. Look at him. That's all the preparation Mike needs, just a hit of that shit. I want to know about that uh, smoke tank with the green O-rings, because that thing looks sweet as shit. I know you did a review, but let's talk about, you know, a few days after uh, what, what, what you're feeling about it, because a lot of people are getting nickel, nickel mods. Talk about it. Talk about it. Yeah. You know what? I like it. Uh, they fixed the, uh, the drip tip. They finally listened. That's the one thing about smoke. They listened, and uh, usually the smoke tanks, uh, the drip tips are wobbly. Well, they finally double O-ringed it, and it's perfect on there. doesn't wobble. They give you three different O-rings, which is cool. They give you a green, a black, a red. Airflow is the same as the VCT Pro. Very airy. And the coils, which is surprising to me, the coils... They perform. They're pretty good. Very nice. How do those coils uh, compare to the sub-tank mini coils, the nickels? Awesome. Now, I can't even compare it to the sub-tank mini. It, there's no, that's, it's in a different league of its own. These uh, coils, you actually would compare them to the Atlantis nickel coils because you're going to put more... Uh, joules slash wattage to them, then you would put a Kanger coil or the, you like that, right? Joules slash wattage. Yeah. Or um, like the, what is it, the, the smoke, the gimlet, which has those uh, nickel coils. The gimlet coils, the nickel ones, or they also go in the VCT, so many VCTs, GVCs, gim, gimlet Ts, anyway, the gimlet <laughs> coils and the, and the, the Kanger uh, nickel coils, those are in their own class. So, these, like I said, would go would be in the same class as the Aspire, the Atlantis coils, and they're the same. They perform the same to me. Sweet. So yeah. Nice. So if you got a, if you have a, this, if you're planning on getting this tank, you're gonna love that that the drip tip is in place, doesn't wobble. Or if you got the VCT Pro and you're gonna go temp control, you don't need to get the tank. Obviously, you could just get the coils. The coils are fine. Perfect. Mike, any experience with STDs? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> After meeting you uh, <laughs> Saturday, now i got to go check myself. I'm like a buffet. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, son. Yo, you speak the truth, BK. So, oh, buck kickers, uh, give us a percentage, Buck Kickers. What do you... Vape in your nickel to canthal builds. What's your ratio? Honestly, lately I would say it's a 75-25 ratio. You know, about 25% of the time I'm vaping uh, nickel builds, and usually it's just like when I'm kicking back at night watching a movie or if I'm driving or you know I just don't want to be bothered worrying about my shit. That's when I vape nickel. You know, um, that's just me. I mean, I do enjoy it. It works great. But it's not for me all the time. You know, there's, you know, most of the day, you know, I'd like to blow a little bit bigger cloud. I'd like a little bit more heat than I can get from a nickel build. But I do get the satisfying flavor. I do get a satisfying cloud from a nickel build. 
but for me, it's more of just a um, it's a set it and forget it type of vape. Uh, did, did any of you do you guys watch Todd's reviews? You know, I haven't watched him for a week or two, but I got to catch up. <clears throat> he has a um, he had an interesting review. You know, he always gets really unique shit that I don't get to even touch. And uh, one of the ones he had the other day was a DNA 40 from Freight Train Mods, it's called. It was a mm -hmm. DNA 40 E-pipe, but with an 18650 battery. Really? Man, did that wet my whistle. You know that uh, actually Grim Green was showing that off. He had it like a couple of weeks ago. Did he? Yeah, he has that. Mm -hmm. So I went to the site, and, and it looks like they're made in like Kentucky, and they're handcrafted by this guy, and... You know, having the the joy of the the, the feel of an e pipe, you know, when you coddle it and you you, you just feel it like that, and you stroke it with your hand. Yeah, you put your hand on the on the shaft part, and you and you just you know the e pipe, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, kind of, um, just kind of just kind of rub the tip and caress it and just yes. put it in your mouth. BK, have you done you you you've done this before, obviously. Oh no, no! I'm I just, just want to let everybody know I don't know here. these two guys. I just I don't know how you even got here. Right now. <laughs> Mike just goes straight to the dick. He's not even about pipe. I don't know what Mike's talking about. I'm talking about mods here. So, <laughs> anyway, we're losing track here. Um, back to the back to the e pipe. So. It has a DNA 40, but it also uses an 18650. And for those of you that have ever had an e-pipe before, one of my biggest gripes is the 18350 batteries that you have to vape with that have a, a limit in the amps because the batteries just you know don't have the amp. Uh, you know, amp it, it has the girth; it just doesn't have the length for Brian, and that's yes. cool. So this thing has girth and length, and I can take it all, and I'm okay with it. Okay. <laughs> um. So anyway. I reached out to that company, and I'll never hear back from them. But if I, by chance, do or come into a large sum of money, I will be purchasing one because uh, very few mods really blow my doors off, and that mod is something special. So if you don't get a chance, uh, look at Todd's review of the Freight Train Mods e-pipe if you're a piper. If you're not a piper and you don't like to do the things that BK likes to do, then you don't have to watch that. So Are you judging? Judgment-free zone, brother. Judgment well, free so what you're trying to say is Todd's pipe really tickles your uh, fancy there. Let's just say this. If I could go into the shed with just Todd, I would. And his pipe? And his pipe. <laughs> Mike would come oh, in shit. and he would hit that shit for the both of us. <laughs> I'd be hitting that shit like this. i get some blackmail on these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mike. He's always got an angle, man. He's always got an angle. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. He's straight, straight up businessman. What do you think? Do you think he's got an angle? No. He said no. Just to let you guys know, before we started the show, we were hanging out, and uh, Mike Vapes was hitting that shit for Mike Vapes on Mike Vapes' picture on his wall. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful sight to see. Hit that shit for Mike Vapes. And Mike, well, Mike Vapes. this one's for you. <laughs> There's something You're wrong. fucking too much, man. Something wrong. Anyway, uh, tonight's show topic, because we actually do have somewhat of a topic, even though it's going to be loose. It's held together with um, fishing line. Uh, tonight's... <laughs> Dental floss. Yes. Uh, the, the topic is, this is why I vape. And we're going to share a little bit of why we vape. Now, obviously... Most of you know why we vape, because this is why you vape too. But I think we wanted to get a little personal, maybe share a little little history, and um, and maybe I'll I'll lead off. Do you guys mind? Go for it. Right ahead, Brian. Okay. So me, um, I, when I was 12 years old, uh, I used to go to Cumberland Farms, and and I lived in sort of the backwoods area, and you know we used to hang out on this trail, and we called it the Cumby Trail for Cumberland Farms. And I remember we used to go to the supermarket and we used to steal Alpine cigarettes. And they were like these really harsh menthol cigarettes. And, um, you know, you, you start puffing, you start coughing. But by the time, I swear, I must have been in eighth grade. I was almost at a pack a day. And I remember I used to inhale at the bus stop 
and then get on the bus and blow smoke out at the bus driver, <laughs> like some punk degenerate kid, you know. Um, by the time I was in high school, I was a full-time smoker, and uh, I continued to smoke all the way up. I think I quit for a year, year and a half at, at one point, but, um, you know, by the end, I was smoking between one and a half to two packs a day, and I chain smoked. I mean, when I wasn't at work, I smoked all the time. And, um, you know, for those of you that have smoked for 20 plus years, you know the, you know, the physical toll it takes on your health. I mean, I was having asthma problems, I was having circulation problems, and, you know, I, I put up a, an Instagram post before the show tonight, and it really hit me. You know, I did not choose to smoke. I had to smoke, but I choose to vape. You know, vaping is a choice for me. It's not, it's so different than cigarettes. Like, I can go a few hours without vaping, and I'm not feeling, you know, like, uh, the, the cigarettes held me in total bondage. And um, now, it's just, I feel free. You know, for the first time in my life, uh, I, I feel free from smoking. And uh, vaping is different than smoking for me. And so I, I made a quick little list of all the things that, obviously, I like about vaping. But, um... The biggest ones are, obviously, it's a safer alternative to smoking, so my health is improved. I feel a hell of a lot better. Um, the next one was, it tastes really good. I can't get over how much flavor has come back in my life. The assortment of juices and the whole um, mixology of juices and what goes into making them and, and sharing with you guys, the community, and all the conversations and watching reviews and sampling at the at the local vape shops, you know, all that adds to the community and that is a huge draw for me. You know, quitting smoking was made so much easier because of the support of the community and I'm telling you, it, it that that was one of the major reasons why the transition was so seamless for me. Um, the other thing is it some nights it, it'll curb my sweet tooth. You know, if you get a, a craving for something, you know, sometimes that sweet taste can uh, curb that. And um, also, I find it relaxing and enjoyable. I like to sit back. I like to have a vape. And um, it takes that mouth-to-hand kind of thing, and uh, it satisfies the need. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was laughing in my own head at myself, so don't worry. <laughs> Dirty mind. What can I say? The next one is a little bit of a lie. Uh, it saves money, potentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> potentially. Uh also, a huge thing is ca the, the car, the clothing, the skin, when I go see patients at work, when I, um, you know, my house, the smell of smoke not being around. It's amazing. You know, I love not smelling like an ashtray. And now when somebody walks into my office that smokes, I can smell that shit from across the office. I mean, it's so noticeable. And it, it horrifies me to know that I smelled that bad for so long. And I didn't even, you know, I didn't even realize it. So that's the last thing. And the reasons to still smoke, zero. I really have no desire to smoke. I really, I haven't had a desire to smoke a cigarette since I quit. And uh, I started vaping last August, so August 2014. I'm a noob. So if you ever watch my rebuild videos and you're like, he doesn't look like he fucking builds shit. Well, no shit. I started vaping in August. So there you go. <laughs> and I'm transparent as hell. I don't claim to be anything other than who I am, what I am, and how I am. So... Um, what about you, BK? Let's get to know you a little bit in a more intimate level. Well, you know, um, like I said, I, I started smoking back in, uh, I want to think here, uh, I think it was 1981 or 1982. Um, I was like 11 years old, 10, 10, year, 10 or 11 years old. You know, back then, you'd go down to the corner store, say you were buying them for your mom. They didn't question you, you know. So I was down there with my little skater rap buddies. You know, I was buying Newports. You know, I want to say by the time I was 13 or 14, I was fully addicted to cigarettes. I was probably smoking about a pack a day. And really, that was it, you know. And it lasted for a long time until, you know, I was in my 30s and I was smoking, you know, two packs of Newport 100s a day, you know. And I really never thought I'd never even dreamed of quitting, you know. Um... I want to say about three, three and a half years ago, I went to a gas station. I picked up a blue cigarette, you know, one of those blue cigarette likes, and I tried it. I really wanted to try it, and 
I returned it an hour or two later. It was just so disappointing. It, it really didn't scratch the itch for me. You know, I know some people out there have quit with them, and that that's great, but it just didn't work for me. So I returned it. I demanded my money back. I got my money back, and then um, I want to say it was December or January of 2013. I had a customer of mine who you know, he was across the country. He said, hey, I know you're a smoker. I can tell by your voice. You know, we used to talk on the phone all the time. <clears throat> he said, look, have you tried vaping? This guy was a big vapor back then. And uh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I tried one of those cigarette-like things from the gas station. It was bullshit. You know, fuck that shit, blah, blah, blah. He's like, look, I'm going to send you a real one. I said, save your money. Don't, don't send me anything. I don't even want to be bothered with it. I I'm happy smoking, you know. Um, and at that point, I had been feeling it. You know, it, it started to affect my health. I was slowing down with my mountain bike riding. I wasn't running as much. You know, it was starting to affect me, but I still felt semi sort of healthy, although I was waking up in the middle of the night coughing, blah, blah, blah. So I think somewhere in the back of my mind, I said, you know what, take, take this guy up on it. So he sent me an advanced personal vaporizer, which at the time was, I believe it was like an Aspire CE3 with a, uh, a little Ego battery, you know, and he sent me, uh, what the hell was it? It's like some tiger's blood. He sent me some tiger's blood. It was like 18 milligram, 24 milligram, something like that. So, you know, I received it in the mail. And, you know, the, the guy sent it to me in good heart. And I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to put the cigarettes down for the night. I'm going to have a couple drinks, and I'm just, I'm going to try this. You know, so I did. And honestly, I never smoked again. It was really like that for me. You know, once I got a, a decent device in my hand, I didn't need to smoke anymore. And, you know, for those of you out there who are new, who don't understand, you know, an Aspire CE3, that's nothing special. I mean, it's, it's just a little shitty Clearo. But to me, I started vaping on it, and it was better than the cigarettes I was vaping. So to me, it just didn't make any sense to pick the cigarettes back up, and that's where I was. And, you know, I think uh, two or three days later, I picked up a Newport, and I lit it. And I smoked maybe half the cigarette, and I just snuffed it out. It just tasted like shit to me, and I never really went back. You know, and from there, I went on to um, cartomizer tanks, um, where you're punching holes in the cartomizer and slipping the tank on and filling it with e-liquid. Um, I went on to, uh, you know, like a K-Fun, and, you know, I just kind of went back and forth playing with all the new hardware, because that's about when the new hardware was starting to come out. Um, <clears throat> jumped into the Kanger Pro Tanks, you know, went back to the K-Fun, went back to the Pro Tank. Then Aspire came out with the Atlantis, which was like, freaking phenomenal. I think that was like a year and a half, two years ago they came out with that. And that was just, that was really it for me. And then I, I vaped on my Atlantis for a while and then I started going back to the K-Funds because you just got a little bit better experience off the rebuildables, you know. I wasn't, you know, we weren't really chasing clouds back then. It was just chasing a good vape, you know, chasing some flavor, chasing the nicotine, the throat hit, just trying to, you know, just satisfy yourself. And really, you know, since then, the industry has just kept going and going and going, and we've been coming out with these awesome products. You know, we came out with the Aspire Atlantis. What was that? In like October, Mike? I don't remember. I think you know, something yeah, like, like that. Uh, November, I think it was. Was it November? Yeah. We came out with that. You know, at the time, I already had drippers and stuff like that, but, you know, they really weren't convenient. You know, I couldn't go to work with them. I couldn't drive with them. It was just a pain in the ass. They came out with the Atlantis, you know, we're ripping clouds on that, and it was just really phenomenal. And since then, the, the, the industry has just spiraled, and it, it's really incredible. And a lot of you, you new guys out there, you new vapors, you guys really have it very, very lucky. You know, it's great. You know, you guys can go into a vape shop. You can grab, you know, anything and just fill it up with e-liquid and just have an awesome fucking vape and not miss cigarettes one bit. And that's that's the great thing about the industry right now, and it's 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 really something incredible. And I hate it, I hope it keeps going forward, you know, like it has been. You know, it's like we have so many of these wonderful devices now. Like, <clears throat> you know, out of these two guys, I'm probably like, you know the least, and I have more stuff than I even can vape. You know, I, I I can barely keep up with it. Like Mike, Brian, I don't even know how you guys keep up with it. I mean, the progress is just incredible. 
But uh, yeah, that's my story, and uh, I'll turn the mic over here back to Brian. Wow. Well, that was a nice little history lesson. <laughs> back when Sorry, I was I, I, I didn't mean to go on forever, but you know, just no. That's exactly that was beautiful. Um, obviously, you are the grandfather of vaping in our in our group, with all of your experience, which really helps. <laughs> you can say you don't know how good you have it when I was your age, blah blah blah. <laughs> so, um, what about you, Mike? How did you start hitting that shit? Where did you start hitting that shit? When did you start hitting that shit? How did you I start started, hitting that shit? I started actually hitting that stinky shit when I was like maybe twelve, and uh, I remember too. I remember it so vividly too. Uh, in my backyard. During barbecues, family, people over. My father was a smoker. My uncles, everybody smoked. So uh, when they'd all like go inside and we're hanging out in my cousin's backyard, we start picking up the cigarette butts, you know, and lighting them up and imitate our parents, you know, because they were smokers. And that's where I got the taste. Taste came out, and I wanted to do it, and I thought it was cool. So I really didn't start fully smoking until I was 16, 17, around that age. And smoked for until it was like it was about a pack a day I was doing. And uh, then it escalated to where when I would go out, clubs, drinking. I mean, there were times where I was smoking. Uh, during the day, I'd go through two packs. And then I'd bring going out at night to go drinking, going to the clubs. I'd make sure I had another two packs with me just for in the club because back then we could smoke everywhere. Yeah. So I had four packs a day I was smoking, no problem for me. Uh, but that was when I was going out partying, which was like at least four times uh, a day. I mean uh, four times a week. <laughs> yeah, four times a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, Mike, but, you and I are the same age, and back then I, I, I can totally relate. You know, the club scene and all that. You know what I'm talking about, right? You are the same go. exact shit. You know, the rave clubs and shit. You know, you're going to go to the club. It's like, okay, I got to make sure I got two packs with me. Because when you're in a club and you're drinking, especially when you're drinking, you're chain smoking. You can't oh, yeah. help yourself. It just, you know, so. So anyway, as time went on, you know, got married. My wife, smoker too. Both of us smoking, smoking in the house. And... You know, it came to a point where, you know, you're laying down in bed and getting that wheezing, that wheezing. You know what I'm You guys know the, the wheezing. Fucking, yeah. You know? yeah. That little yeah, that whistle. I was, just laying down, I was like, yeah. you know what? I think it's time, you know? And I quit. I did it. I actually picked up a cigarette from a, a tobacco shop. And it was called a smoke stick. And I don't know how I did it. I went a year and a half using that cigarette torturing myself, and I, oh, every day I had the craving, and I said, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go back to smoking, I went a year and a half, anyway, I ended up having a barbecue in my house, 4th of July barbecue, and uh, I got trashed, so anyway, I had friends over, they were smoking, I let me get a cigarette, and I picked it up again, so I went like a, a year of smoking cigarettes, and then I finally decided it was uh, New Year's Eve, of uh, 2014, actually 2013 going into 2014, where I decided I'm done. No more. So I picked up that cigarette again, the same one, the smoke stick, which I couldn't stand. And I was doing that for about a couple of weeks, and then I ended up picking up another one. I got I actually started, that's when I started watching YouTube. And I was watching Indoor Smokers. And Indoor Smokers was the one that actually got me into the craziness, the hobby aspect, and I'm sure everybody here has watched Indoor Smokers, you know, yep. and I still the main them. thing about when we used to watch I Indoor Smokers, we used to look at his uh, display with all of his mods, and I used to sit there, and I used to be like looking to see what he had, I'm like, what the hell are these things he's using, you know, and I'm sitting there smoking this, uh, a smoking, vaping uh, this cigarette called a Green Smoke, I don't know, I think that's what it's called, Green Smoke. And that's where I decided, you know, I was watching him, and I started buying stuff, and it became out of control for me. And I was like, I love this. This is awesome. And I started using this. So started using the Aspires. First, I was using the BDCs, and then the BVCs came out, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. 
And during this whole time of doing this, my mind never went back to a, a cigarette. There was no craving for it or nothing. So yeah, as the time went by, better. I started watching other reviewers. And I think it was around November, right when the Atlantis came out. That's when uh, I was watching Brian at the time. This is when Brian was beginning his uh, doing his reviews. So watching him do reviews got me to say, you know what, I want to do this too. I'm watching him, and he's helping everybody and helping me because I was watching him. And I decided, you know what, I want to help too. I've got so yeah. much stuff here to start reviewing. I might as well review it. You Mike's know, like, if this idiot could do it, anybody could do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, uh, so I did my first video, which is actually up. If you go into my video section, you'll see my first video. I had just bought, I went and bought a DNA 40 when it first came out, the RDNA 40 from Vapor Shark, and the Atlantis, and I started blowing clouds in my kitchen, and uh, I messaged Brian and I said, "Yeah, I just put up a video with the Atlantis." So Brian checked it out. And he was like, "Oh, that's awesome, cool," and just from him responding to me with uh, looking at my video, I said, "You know what? I'm gonna do videos." You know, this is awesome. You know, I like this. So, and from there, it's been, you guys know, been history. And I, I've been enjoying it. I love helping people. And uh, I know I get a lot of stuff. I did spend a lot of money doing this, a lot of money, which I didn't care. But uh, as time went on, then people started contacting me, you know, to review their stuff. So, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to say no. I said, yeah, if you want to send it to me, I'll show it off. And it's escalated to where now I'm getting shit like this. I got nine sub-ohm tanks right here. <laughs> like I said, China. And, uh, yeah, we're we'll reviewing like that soon. Over there. Yeah, and I'll be doing a nice giveaway, too, with those. So it's been fun so far. And uh, the feeling of helping everybody, it's just awesome. I love it. You know? Sweet. That's freaking awesome, Mike. You know, that, that moment when you realize that this is truly possible, like it's not – I don't know about you guys, but there was such a burden that was lifted off of my shoulders when I realized, like, not only is vaping satisfying, but I could really do this. And then very quickly, it, it actually became almost like not even like an alternative to smoking. Like, I, even, I don't even think about, so I'm not doing this white knuckling to not smoke. Like, I'm doing this because I enjoy it, but it's a completely separate activity than smoking for me. Um, yeah. And also the ability to do it in my house without having it smell and to be able to enjoy it, you know, in my car. Because I used to always, you know, have the window down or be outside in the freezing cold. And it just, it gives me so much more freedom to be able to enjoy it. Um, but I have to sometimes, you know, r remind myself that when I started vaping, you know, I was on, you know, 24 milligrams of nicotine. I was, I liked the tighter draw. Um, when I hit Mex with RBAs at the local vape shop, I would be like, oh my god, why would somebody want to vape this warm, hot steam bath of a vape? I didn't like the open air draw, and satisfying to me today is totally not what, what was satisfying to me in the beginning. And it's real easy when you get hyped up in the community and you have like-minded vapers that are all experienced, and we shoot the shit about what we like, what's enjoyable, when I get excited for reviews. I need to sort of look at indoor smokers and remember, because he always has that slant of the new person, the new person quitting. And that's a really important aspect of the YouTube experience because like you guys, you know, Indoor Smokers videos, Grim Greens videos, um, you know, all those guys that, that started this were my inspiration. They were what I was looking at for enjoying, you know, vaping. And um, and here we are today. So it's it's been a hell of a ride and I'm looking forward to the future. Yeah, so this... Amen. Yeah, to this day, I still watch Indoor Smokers. I think I've watched every video he's put up. Me too. From the beginning till now, I've watched everything. And I remember when uh, I was, before I was doing reviews, when I was uh, watching them, I used to get upset when he didn't put one up every day. <laughs> I know, right? I was looking forward to every day him putting up a video. I think that's why lately I've been putting one up every day. I get upset when you don't put one up. You know? So I've been putting it up every day, <laughs> video lately, so... I guess it's because of indoor smokers I'm doing that. And I know a lot of people look forward to watching my videos, so I know how that feeling is. So, Well, it was, you know, it was the same thing for me. You know, I was watching indoor smokers. I was watching um, Rip Trippers. Um, I Get You 69, the British guy. And I was watching all these guys, and, 
you know, not only did it help me gain more satisfaction with vaping, but it kind of brought that excitement of the hobby aspect into it, which is really what clinched it for me, you know, to just fully just drag me out of cigarettes and forget it and just embrace this whole new, not only, um, you know, habit, but lifestyle and hobby, you know, and um, that's kind of why I started my channel. You know, originally I, I, I kind of dove into it. I was, I was already getting into rebuildables and stuff, but I started to go in back into like, you know, Aspire stuff and stuff like that because I wanted to like just get people off of cigarettes. You know what I mean? Because I was so excited to be where I was at. You know, I wanted to drag other people into vaping, you know, and that's kind of where my channel came from. And then I got confused. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So I kind of let the channel sit for two or three months. Then I said, you know what? I'm going to come back to it. I'm just going to do what I'm doing on my channel. And that was it. And then when I came back, it's kind of when I met Brian. You know, Brian had just started to put up his YouTube channel. I think that was in, what, October, November? You, you, you actually were the second day, my second day on YouTube. You were like my third subscriber ever. Yeah. And, you know, I, I saw Brian put up this YouTube video. And, you know, there he was in his basement. It was Brian, just as you see him today. You know, he's a great guy. And he was sitting there, and he had, um, he had the eye stick. Yep. And the eye stick and the Atlantis, yes, the, Atlantis uh, the, the Nautilus Mini. Yes. Yes. And Brian's sitting there, and he was just, you could just see the excitement in his eyes, you know, but like he was so fucking thrilled to be so satisfied with something. He was putting up a video. He wasn't quite sure, you know, what he was doing putting up the video, but like he was excited, and the enthusiasm and the honesty was there. And I was like, man, I gotta fucking subscribe to this guy. So I subscribed to him, and then shortly thereafter, him and I started going back and forth. I think on Google Hangouts, and we, you were, we became we were friends back then, like just typing back and forth. Yeah, yeah, just bullshitting. And then uh, I remember I was on Google Plus, and I saw Brian comment on one of Mike Vape's videos. And Mike Vape, Mike Vape's had just done the uh, the SX Mini. And he had a K Fun V4. <laughs> it was one of the most epic Mike Vapes videos. For you guys out there that are subscribed to Mike Vapes, look up his K Fun V4 video. Oh it shit! Is freaking epic. Mike is making out with the K Fun V4 and the SX Mini. And from that moment on, I was subscribed to Mike Vapes. And I want to say a couple months later. The three of us kind of got into Google Hangouts together, and we all kind of became friends. So that's kind of where the vape team came from, for those of you out there who are wondering. And the rest is just an ongoing love story. Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just the bromance. But I, I think one of the things in the community that not, not wasn't necessarily lacking, because I don't want to put down any other reviewers, because I know there's some tight-knit groups of people, but I wanted to have a more transparent, because none of us are celebrities or stars. I'm just some regular dude, you know, and, and so is Mike and so is BK. We're approachable. We're vapors just like you. We have real lives, real jobs, real problems, real families. And um, I wanted to sort of get rid of the veneer and just be real, like talk about things we mess up. Like the other day, I mean, in one of my videos, I, I totally flipped a coil the wrong way and I, 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 I put the wire in wrong. And like, I'm human. And like, you guys, the community, you guys tell me so much helpful information. You'll give me links for places. You'll show me new mods. Um, Michael sent me a, a freaking message on Hangouts or a, a message. BK sends me information all the time. But the community and the sharing, this knowledge is priceless. I mean, it just gives you so much a more satisfying experience vaping. And it's just getting better and better. I was just watching, um, what was her name, Abby Vapes video the other night on... Uh, uh, re-wicking, and I was trying to get a really good wick going in my uh, dot mod, and she did this like whole square wick thing in here, and man, what a freaking beautiful wick job! <laughs> Anybody in for a wick job? <laughs> it just sounded dirty to my fucking brain. Uh, I had to go there. I had to. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why that happens. There's like a little devil in my head that kicks the shit out of me all the time. Uh, I think Devoe has that too. I don't know. 
Anyway. <laughs> yeah, DeVoe definitely has that. He is a sick fuck, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, he is. I love that guy. <laughs> Yo, DeVoe, you got to come to New Jersey. We got to meet you at the Vape Expo. Yeah, he does. He's going to come to the Vape Expo. Yeah, you got to plan it now, take off. You need to come down there. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting a room at the hotel with DeVoe, just us two for at least an hour, maybe actually 10 minutes probably. And, You're uh, more of a be... man than I am. I don't think I can handle DeVoe. <laughs> I, I love his, on Twitter, if you ever watch DeVoe's Twitter, his shit is so fucking funny. Like, he'll do these, like, three-second clips where he's like, if you can smell poop when you're sitting down, other people can smell your poop. <laughs> and it's like, well, fuck yeah, he's totally right. I love it. Uh, like little gems of perverted wisdom, and I love it. Yeah. But you guys, the community, it, it's so much about that. And, um, you know, sitting here making videos, trying out products is really enjoyable, and that's one aspect of, of YouTube that I like. But the best part, I look forward every week to Thursday night to the vape team, watching the live feed here as you guys are chatting back and forth about what juice you like, what this is going on, seeing Mike out of the corner of my eye, watching him hit that shit beautifully in the corner, having BK take, taking a nice sip of that fucking frosty beverage. These are the things that this guy loves. <laughs> Much love. Much BK, love going on here on the vape BK. team. Pardon? What are we drinking tonight? Actually, we uh, we just polished off a bottle of Deer Park water, my friend. Oh, nice. Yeah, I hate I hate to disappoint. No, actually, I did have a few vodka and clubs before this. Um, I've actually been, you know, it's getting warm out, so it's a little too warm for me to get drunk every night. But um, I've decided since the last couple of Vape Team episodes, I was about as dull as a wooden spoon. I'm going to drink on Thursday nights. Just for you guys. There you go. However, I had three or four, so we switched to the Deer Park, and uh, that's where we're at right now. So, Silo Beast, anybody? Mmm. Yes. Uh, well, Silo Beast. For all you peeps out there that are in the market for the Silo Beast, um... Mike already has a review. I have a review. Uh, I bought this, by the way, and so did Mike. Beyond Vape doesn't think that we're worthy enough to have us test their products yet. Maybe someday. But until then, I have enjoyed And I don't mind buying stuff. I mean, I, I, I buy stuff all the time. So um, th they must have shipped out because I know, like, Vape and Heathen got it. Mike got it. I got it all yesterday, I think, or the day before. And um, the first thing is, if you get a Silo Beast, and Mike discussed this in his video that, uh, that he put up, and I'm going to show you right now. The airflow is really restricted on this thing. And it, the reason, and I can't even wrap my head around why they did this, but there's this little rubber gasket that covers the chimney. I'm going to take it out and show you guys real quick. I was going to make a video, but fuck it. Look at this. There's this little rubber gasket right here. Now, You'll notice that this one is trimmed because on the one that came from the manufacturer, it had like a lip that really closed off the diameter of the opening. And this thing sits on the top of the chimney right here, right? And it, what it did was it stops juice from getting in your chimney, which is smart. But the fact that they had that lip that was covering like 50% of the airflow opening, it made it so tight, so restricted. So what you want to do is you want to take some sharp scissors, you want to pinch pinch the little um, rubber piece in half and just snip the rim so that there's a tiny little lip so it doesn't slip down the uh, chimney and then uh, put it back on. I have not not had any leaking, no juice in my mouth and uh, tighten it back up and now the airflow is exactly the same and I tested it with Mike before the show started exactly the same as my Freemax Star. So, and that is with the .5, I, somebody said these are the old coils. Mike, the, the .5 uh, coils that come with the new Atlantis coils, do they have four air openings on the bottom and bigger wicks, the .5s? I do not remember, to tell you the truth. Somebody said yes, and somebody said no. I thought that the place I bought my coils from were the, the new ones, and they were only two openings. So if you, anybody watching, if you have the new 0.5 of them, not the 0.3s. What are they? And I'm pointing this at you guys like a dick. 
can I can check right now. And I have the Atlantis uh, coils for the the temperature control ones, nickel. And you know, I didn't even check. Yeah, like the nickel ones for Atlantis, they got four channels. Four airflow, cha four airflow. Four, uh, wicking channels. Yeah, Excuse I know. Me, gentlemen, I'll be right back. Yep. <laughs> Nature calls, I guess. But the regular coils, I don't have any of the regular Atlantis coils. Both of mine are, I tossed them. I use them, and I don't think I have any. I have to check that. Let me see. Yeah, you know, there's some discussion right now, Mike, while you're checking up in yeah. the comments. I don't have. You don't have any? Um, so anyway, people are talking about that you shouldn't have to mod the device, and I completely agree. I bought this, and you shouldn't have to. I don't understand why if they sent it to um, Matt and, and Twisted and they were testing these things, didn't they notice that little rubber gasket? Is there something I'm missing of why it's there? I don't know. They had it for a long time. I don't know why they didn't say anything. They should have said something, I think, about that. I noticed it right out when I opened it up. I was like, whoa, this thing is restricting the airflow. It's got to be because it's all about what your chimney is. The opening, it doesn't matter how much airflow is on the bottom here. It's your chimney, too, if it's the if the opening is, you know. So I'm looking at it. I'm doing the top fill, and I'm like, nah, this is restricting it. There's no way. You know, so, yeah. Strange. Well, it's hit, strange, but I love you anyway. It hits much, much, much better now than it did. So I gotta say, if you got one, do it. Yep. I wish though that the coils from the Freemax Star would go into the silo. Yeah. I wish they would, because these coils. I mean, I, like I said in the beginning, I'm late to the game with the Freemax, but uh, ooh, these coils are unbelievable. This tank. I tell you what, though, the Atlantis uh, 0.3 and 0.5 ohm heads, the new heads, are pretty fucking good. Yeah, the 0.3s were good. Were good. But I only had one. I used it up, and but uh, this coil is awesome, and the Freemax. <clears throat> I actually can't wait to get down to Steel Vapor tomorrow because they they have a pack of uh, 0.3s waiting for me. I really like those coils. And I hated the old Atlantis, but the new one, mwah, very yep. good. Someone wrote they have had shitty luck with the star coils. Who wrote that? Noodle King. Yeah, this is like this is the first time, this is the first coil I'm using uh, came with a point two or two five it was. And a point five and uh, I haven't used the point five yet. I put the point two in here right away and no issues. It's so far awesome. And I think I got it. I'm running uh, on the Hexome. I got to have it right now. I think around 75 watts putting on it. Good. Freaking baller mic over here showing off the Hexome. Yeah, uh, Twisted wasn't impressed with it. Well, if he's not impressed with it, then it must not be good. Yeah. Well, I don't blame him for what he said in his re in his review for it. It's basically the same stuff I was gonna say, you know. Yeah. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> That's probably better, BK. You know what? Fuck it, BK. Talk. Speak Just say it, BK. Get By it the way, I'm not a million. You know what? Whatsoever. He's pissed. He's pissed off because he didn't come out with the clone version yet. <laughs> You heard your Al -Al the Al -Al the Foo Hatton, which he came out with, by the way. All right, that's it. That's all the shit well, talking yeah. BK's doing his, tonight. His gripe was that it wasn't, it hasn't, yeah, his gripe is that it didn't have no screen for it, and mm -hmm. uh, also the price. Which the price, yeah, I can understand. It is expensive. But, um, hey. Eh, mad on. You know, when, when, when my Caravella comes in in a couple months, am I going to sit there and complain about the price? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, I can go out there and I, I could buy a Segelli 150 and have one hell of a good high-powered vape any day of the week for like 80 90 bucks 
you know, if you shop around. But does that does that negate, you know, a higher end device that maybe doesn't quite put out as much or puts out as much but costs three times as much? I mean, come on, you know, it's like comparing a um, it's like comparing an Evo to a new BMW. I mean, all right, the Evo performs, does everything, has it all. However, the fit and finish of the interior is like a Chinese food container. It's not like a BMW. You can't compare them. You know, it's two completely different markets. You know, um, it might suit the purpose, might be great, but it's not the same. Yo, I completely agree. I, I own an Evo 8. I own a BMW now, and they both get me to work, but man, it's yeah. a different experience. Yeah, and I mean, the Evo is fast, right? The Beamo, Beamer's fast, Yeah. right? But it's it's a totally different feel. It's a totally different thing, yep. you know? And that's that's not to put down the Evo, and that's not to put down the Sigeli. No, they're both excellent, if exactly what they're, doing, what they're designed for. Yeah. Well, a device like this, like the Hexone, I have reading the comments, uh, was, for me, I think this model here is, uh, I think it's $210 to get this one. I actually got this from uh, my local vape shop. They gave it to me for 200 cash. I mean, I saved 10 bucks. whoopee do. But still, I paid 200 for it, and the one thing I know is that I could have this for my lifetime, and I know that it's warranty. They come with a lifetime warranty mm -hmm. on this Five years down the road, this breaks. They'll replace it for me. They'll fix it. They'll give me a new yeah. one, whatever they do. If your Sigeli breaks, it ain't getting replaced. You know, so I could understand the part where why it costs two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. you, know, so. you know, it's like you know. I need to regurgitate this for the people out there. You know, our our, our followers, our friends, everyone watching. You know, it's not it's not about like a status thing. It's just it is what it is. You know. Um, we all review clones, we all review affordable authentics, you know, and we all review, you know, high-end nice devices. And I don't really put one above the other, but they all kind of just fill like a different niche, you know. It's like I have I have fossil watches, okay? They keep just as good a time as my tag. You know, but my tag is still a tag. You know, and I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and say my tag is worthless and is a piece of shit. Because my fossil costs, you know, 40, 50 bucks, and my tag costs, well, I don't even want to say it. <laughs> 4,000. Yeah. What's that? 4,000. Enough, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I still wear them both. I enjoy them both. They both tell time fucking perfect. You know, it's just, it is what it is. Yep. I use my phone for time, and I use my Breitling and my tag for timepiece uh, posturing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, falling, you it's, know? Yeah, it's you know, and it's like that. There, there is something to be said about branding and perceived value. Um, yeah. It's it's that way with with sunglasses. It's that way with jewelry. It's that way with clothing. Is the shit we enjoy worth it? Well, there is something to be said about perceived value, and you know, you could you could put something on and think it's authentic and you really enjoy it, and then all of a sudden you find out it's a clone. And it's not the same. Now, some people like to vape because it's a piece of hardware in their mouth to give them vapor. Other people like to vape because it's a passion. It's a hobby. They like the craftsmanship. They like the stories behind the businesses. They like to see the videos of what goes into manufacturing and distributing. Uh, there's so much involved. And there's something for everybody. And that's the beauty about where we're at right now in the vape game. There's just so much choice and selection. And I'm really fucking scared for the future of vaping if these regulations keep getting pushed forward. I just I don't want it to be jumping through hoops to get things approved by the FDA if they start regulating devices. Um, you know, it's just scary. It really is. I mean, it's going to take away the enthusiasm. Actually, no, it's going to create BK and Mike Vapes in my basement, and we're going to get a CNC machine, and we're going to start doing underground shit and having like a wave radio and doing a broadcast on a fucking wave radio, and we're going to go underground. So mark my words, the vape team's never going to die. We're not going anywhere, and you know, you know, just just for the record, you know, just you know, if there's no more vaping, if there's no more vaping on YouTube, BK Buck Kickers Reviews is still going to be reviewing. I'll be reviewing Dustbusters and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting, BK. 
<laughs> you think I'm kidding. I got this really nice Black & Decker here. Hold on, let me get a drink of this. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to answer someone's question quickly. Noodle King, yes, I have it. What was that, Mike? Noodle King, yes, I have it. I'm answering a question. Everybody's constantly asking the <laughs> Noodle King. You have what, gonorrhea? What, what do you have, Mike? Yes, the Vanga tank. He wants to know if I have the Vanga tank. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. The three of us have the Vanga tank. By the way, BK was hitting the Vanga tank. Somebody asked earlier what BK was, what tank BK was hitting. I think it's the Vanga, right, BK? Yeah, it's the Vanga. We all have the Vanga. Do you, do you got a Thanga for the Vanga? I have a Thanga for the Vanga. I kind of like the Vanga. Yeah, I'll you give know. you guys a sneak peek. The Vanga tank right here, as you can see it, has top fill like the Limo 2. There's the opening right there. And it's got airflow just like the Arctic. And the coils in here are actually pretty tasty. Reviews yeah, coming soon. They, they look exactly like the Arctic coils, but I don't know if it's just me, but I, I'm getting a lot better flavor out of them. Yes, a lot better flavor. And I've been I've been vaping the shit out of this Vanga for a week, and I, I really have a hard time putting it down. It, it's good. Yeah, I've actually had this video recorded for it for a while now. It's been sitting in my queue. It'll probably go up sometime, maybe next day or two. I don't know. Just, just to satisfy my curiosity and you know our viewers out there, Mikey, how many videos do you have sitting in the queue right now? Four, recorded. Actually, that I'm kind of disappointed. Usually, you have like six or eight. I just put up three in the past two days. Mm -hmm. I have zero point zero in the queue. Really? Yes. I don't queue up, BK. I'm a I'm a daily reviewer. I try to. I don't have, I don't know. I'm fucking slow, man. I'm slow. You're like me. No, I, I'll keep like maybe one or two in the queue tops. You know, Mikey over here, he's, we're not operating on his level yet. I can't operate on his level, man. I'm just not there. You know what I mean? I spent too much time playing with my Wanga and vaping on the Vanga. <laughs> hey, Pippin ain't easy, but Mikey makes it look easy. He sure fucking does. Yep. Anyway, guys, we are almost out of time. It's 10.57 already. I don't know where the time goes. I guess time flies when you're having fun. But I really appreciate all of you guys watching the vape team. And, uh, you know, our show is often copied, but it is never copied to the level of quality, expertise, and precision that you get here. <laughs> uh, that's a often joke. Often copied, but never duplicated. Very, very true, BK. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Until next time, my vaping friends, this is Brian from the Vapor Chronicles saying good night. I love you. Weird silence. BK. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, BK. <laughs> hey, you know, as always, kick butts, vape for life. I'll see you guys next time. Nice. I love that. Yes, thank you everybody for joining us. Before we sign off, I just want to give a quick update. I did a review for the Zero Tank, and a lot I've been getting a lot of messages that the guy is not responding to your emails. Give the guy a chance. It's one person responding to probably thousands of emails. He will get to you guys all that want this device. So anyway, thank you guys, and remember, keep on vaping. Beautiful silence. I love it. And like, and I like to stare in Mike's eyes when it goes quiet like that. It's kind of sexy, isn't it? Yeah. Go ahead, BK. <laughs> we doing a little over time here. All right. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, man. My freaking back is starting to hurt me again. We're still alive. You know that, right? Are we? Yes. I <laughs> just say. <laughs> <laughs> he was turning his oh. hand around. He's like, my back hurts. <laughs> He's like, my fucking back and my balls. <laughs> oh man, you right. know. I'm gonna hit my this one time for all you peeps out there. Right. Mike Vapes is good. He's gonna hit that shit out. Hitting that shit. <laughs> <laughs>